So this past weekend, we started playing a campaign called the Apotheosis Stone. It is set in the ongoing storyline of the Tomb of Annihilation. It takes place in Chult and starts at Port Nyanzaru. Uh, the campaign is set at 18th level. So what I did was... Uh, we started, this group that I'm gaming with now, we started to playtest D&D Next back in May 2012 when it first came out. And we've been playing for the last five years, um, usually t at least two times a month, uh, sometimes more. Um, if everyone showed up who is a part of a group, I don't know how I would manage the session. However, we generally have um, probably six players. Uh, it just so happens that for this session, Chapter 1, Session 1, we had three players. Um, so what I did was I allowed... The, uh, the people who were going to be interested in playing this particular campaign to go back and pick their favorite character um, going all the way back to 2012 and take that character uh, regardless of his level or her level and advance that character all the way to 18th level. Um, in doing so, they got to keep all of their equipment and their magic items or whatever that they had earned um, during play. And in addition to that, they got to uh, pick two magic items from the Dungeon Master's Guide. Any two magic items that they wanted, excluding artifacts. Um, so... Two people, two of the three players, uh, decided to do that. The other person decided to make a new character. Um, and so players that made new characters got to start at 18th level, would get the wealth and equipment from their class and background, and then again got to choose any two magic items from the Dungeon Master's Guide, excluding artifacts. So for this first session... We, uh, we had Vrayri Everhurt, a drow evoker. Um, then we had Tessa, who was a champion fighter with a sword of sharpness. And last but not least, we had Arlen Strangeways, who was a choleric with his javelins of lightning. So the campaign um, is based much like Tomb of Annihilation, on Chult, and at Port Nyanzaru. However, my intention as Dungeon Master for this story is that the events are taking place about six months before what actually goes down in the hardcover book of uh, Tomb of Annihilation. So for resources, I, uh, I, I did a lot of reading as far as uh, the, in the Jungles of Chult book from Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, Pulled on, uh, pulled that from the past. Um, I also did some reading um, with uh, the the hardcover book Tomb of Annihilation, and I also downloaded the Adventurers League um, document uh, City on the Edge. So using those different resources, um, along with a uh, adventure from Advanced Dungeons & Dragons that I don't want to mention yet, but uh, as the series continues, I will uh, discuss discuss that book. Um, but for now, it remains classified and top secret. Um, came up with the idea for this campaign, the Apotheosis Stone. So in Session 1, Chapter 1, Session 1, um, the players arrive... The characters arrive in Port Nyanzaru and explore the town, and then are uh, employed by uh, Sindra Sylvain to seek out uh, possible cures for the Death Curse. So since this is actually happening a few months before the actual Tomb of Annihilation uh, storyline, 
I went with the idea that the uh, the Death Curse was very fresh, very new. They kind of have some ideas of what's going on, but um, information is still being gleaned, and they they have some information that's right, but some information isn't quite that right. So right now, what they know is that the Death Curse affects people who have been resurrected, and the belief is that it is only affecting spellcasters at this point. Um, they do know that it's a withering disease, but they do not know how to cure it or really what's causing it other than the fact that it affects those two things. People who have been resurrected and essentially people who are arcane or divine spell users. Um, so I will talk more about what actually happened in the first session, but that's kind of the introduction for the Apotheosis Stone.